Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk about a new curriculum that I'm trying out. It's BJU Press Homeschool, and I chose the DVD option, so they're gonna be teaching it. You can do online, but we're gonna be traveling in the RV. I don't know if we're gonna have any Wi-Fi issues, internet issues, so I just chose the DVD option, and they're gonna be teaching it. So it is a student-led curriculum versus parent-led, where you kind of teach the child and you're the teacher all that good stuff. So I am completely new to BJU Press. I have been homeschooling. This is going to be my fourth year now, but this um, curriculum in particular I have never used. For the past three years we have been using The Good and the Beautiful and we really liked it. I think it's really great especially if you're just starting out homeschooling. It's just so straightforward. It can take a little bit to get used to how, how they run things. Anything new it takes a little bit of time to get used to but for the most part it is so straightforward. Everything is integrated into one. I absolutely love that. For example the language arts, the spelling, the reading the writing like everything they even have some art appreciation in there it's all just one book and the way that it's laid out for the good and the beautiful the lesson as well as the teacher's guide is all in one book so you don't have like separate teacher's guide or anything like that everything is literally all in one book very space saving i will say and just pretty straightforward my daughter's coming in the RV. she's going to be playing in the back so let me let her go through hi louise I'm actually sitting in the RV right now. We are about a week or so away from <laughs> from hitting the road, so I'm trying to organize everything, and that's kind of what I wanted to focus on in today's video, is share my experience with the good and the beautiful. I have not used BJU Press, but I am gonna share how I have organized it so far. Keep in mind that this is gonna be my first year using it, so it might change, it might even change a few months in. I might think like, okay, this is not working, let me try something different, but I feel like I have a bit of a system down, and it's a, a space-saving system because we really don't have a lot of real estate to work with when it comes to the RV. I do love the whole, I'm getting way off track here, but I do love the whole file cabinet system that people do on YouTube videos, but for me, it's just, it's not feasible for the RV, so I'll share what I will be doing. But back to the good and the beautiful, I do think it's a great curriculum if you're just starting out or for like younger grades. They do have some DVD options or online options for I think math starting in fourth grade or something like that. They're constantly changing, coming out with new things every single year I feel like. And I do like the curriculum as a whole. I just felt like I wanted to try something different for my daughter specifically this year. I wanted something a little bit more challenging, a little bit more in depth. So I was going between a Becca and a BJU Press. A Becca is accredited. BJU Press does have an uh, accredited option where I think you pay $75 or something like that I'm not sure and they do it through a different organization or something I haven't really looked into it but I do know they have an accredited option that you can go with if you go that route for me I'm not looking at that right now I'm just kind of comparing the two it is a bit expensive especially compared to the good and the beautiful I think for two kids two grades I paid a little under two thousand dollars a becca's probably two thousand dollars or more so a becca's a, i would say a few hundred dollars more expensive and the reason why i chose bju press is because for me talking to people they're both pretty intense in terms of textbooks so the good and the beautiful like i said it's all one textbook like language arts is just one book math one book this one book whereas bju press and a becca as well they have a textbook for English, they have a textbook for spelling, they have a textbook for phonics, um, they have a textbook for reading, it's that, all of that is separated. But talking to people, I have heard that Abeka can be a little bit more rigid in terms of how they do things and skipping lessons and things like that. My best suggestion I would say is to kind of talk to people who have used it, hear their insight, watch some videos maybe and kind of see which one will fit your family best at the end of the day. You never really know until you actually try it for yourself. I might try BJU and think, okay, this is not really for us. And then move on to Obeka, might like that better. Like, it's it's kind of trial and error, and error with homeschooling. I feel like you're always evolving, always figure, figuring out the best techniques for your child, all that fun stuff, but that's also a big pro when it comes to homeschooling is that you're kind of in control of all of that and you can evolve with your child and all that good stuff. So that's a brief overview of my experience with the good and the beautiful and my thoughts be behind why I chose BJU Press. I spent the past two days, well first everything came in and it can be super overwhelming if this is your first year and you get like all these boxes. I think I got 
like six boxes the first day and then three boxes or so of just the DVDs the day after. I was like, wow, this is intense. I don't even know where to begin. I laid everything out and I'm like, why are there so many books? On top of it, I got two curriculums. So I got grade one for my son and grade three for my daughter. So it's not like I'm just doing one, I'm doing two of them. And it was just a lot, especially if it's your first year. I feel like once you get into it, it's probably smooth sailing once you figure it out. As with anything new, it takes a little bit of time. My biggest advice is to go through, sit down, lay all the books out, try to figure out what books go with what, look through the video lesson guide if you're going to be doing the video option, and kind of try to figure out how what is the day going to look like if you're going to be doing the full blown curriculum if you're just doing one subject and you're just choosing to buy like math it's going to be a lot easier to figure that out but if you're doing the entire curriculum i would sit down go through the video lesson guide or the lesson guide and try to figure out what is a day going to look like what are these books for what how am i going to be using them how is my child going to be using them once you figure out and have a general idea of what the day is going to look like and you realize all right the work text is going to go with this and the book is going to be used with this then you can go about organizing and figuring out what is the best system to organize everything and where to keep all these materials because they also send you i have up there a stack of parent guides and answer keys i have a whole stash for my daughter i have a whole stash for my son and it's just like a big stack of just answer keys and parent guides which i won't really be referencing too much i assume since i'm doing the video video DVD option maybe I'll reference it here and there they do have some like they had phonics tests in one of the answer key booklets so don't just throw them away and forget about them you might need them go through them and you might need some pages out of them and then you have a whole stash of handouts and then you have textbooks and then you have a manipulatives packet and then you have work texts and then they have their BJU book links plus they'll send you the actual books that they got to read so go through figure out what book is going to go with what, when are they going to be using it, get a general idea, and then and then you can go in and be like, alright, this is how I'm going to organize everything. So I spent the past two days doing that, and I feel like I finally have an organi organizational system down. These are the video lesson guides, and I used the ones that are subject specific. So I have math here, and then next I have spelling, and then after that I have phonics and reading, and then after that I have the science and then last I have the heritage studies so they do have a video lesson guides of all the subjects which are great for when you're actually doing the lessons to kind of keep you on track I don't know how often I'll use this because everything is found in the homeschool hub but this is the one this is the combined video lesson guides. so it's all of these subjects combined day one all of these subjects day two all of the subjects day three all the way till the end of the school year I didn't use this to organize it, I used these to organize it, so I used the subject specific ones. So I started off with math, and I separated day 1 through 80 into four quarters. So I did day 1 through 45, 46 through 90, 91 through 135 I think it is, so on and so forth. And I separated it into four quarters in these binders here, for one, one for each quarter. And each binder also has every single subject, so I have eight tabs for every single binder. The last one only has seven because Heritage Studies doesn't go till the end of the year the way that I set up my schedule. Every grade is going to be a little bit different but one thing that I noticed is that every day you're going to need some kind of some kind of work. So whether your child is going to be doing a student handout, maybe they'll be doing something from the activity manual, maybe they'll be doing both, maybe this, then they have their work textbooks, this is their work text pages right here. Depending on the subject and depending on the grade, they're going to have something to do for every single subject. So instead of you as a parent or the child going in and having to rip out the pages for the day, so the teacher might say, okay, you need page, for example, math day one, you're going to need the folder characters handout, and then my son is going to need work text page one through four. Instead of him having to do that every single day and then day two, he's not going to need any handouts, but he's going to be working on pages five and six, day three, four, five, and then some days you have some days you have a lot going on, some days not so much. So for example, day 87, you have the gone fishing handout, your hundred chart handout, fact review 27, and then you're also going to need work text page 157. So he's going to need all of this for day 87. Do turtle instead of him having to rip out the pages every single day for every subject, I went ahead and did that for him for every subject every day. I did a day one through 180 and then split that into four quarters. For the first week, 
I did put all of the work for every subject into a weekly binder. So instead of my son having to use the entire binder for the quarter and have all of these papers right here, I made a weekly binder for him, for my son and then also for my daughter right there. So the first five days I'm, you're not, I'm not going to find in quarter one because I already took them out and put them in the weekly binder. It sounds like a lot of information but it's kind of the same thing that people do with the file system. Some people will do it by week. They rip out all the pages they need for the entire week for all the subjects and they put it in like a, either manila folders or the file system. I don't have room for a file system so for me the binders separating them into quarters into quarter one through four was the best option. The only thing you have to to keep in mind is you might need to stay on track because let's say you finish quarter one but you're not exactly on where quarter one ends you're gonna have to kind of adjust adjust your binder to that or just stay on top of things and stay on track but I'm not gonna find the first five days in here because I already took them out so quarter one starts with 15 work text page 15 which is supposed to be day six. Oh no I accidentally ripped it so if I look at day six, oh actually it's a chapter test. So day seven, it's work text pages four, three, 14 through 16. So when I go to quarter one, it should be 14 through 16. 14, I think it was like a, just like a unit cover page. So 14 through 16, that is the first one. But the days one through five, I already put in here in this binder to start off the school year. So when I go to math, I have math right here. And I look at the video lesson guide. The video lesson guide tells me I'm gonna need the folder characters handout which is this right here. And then he's also gonna need work text page one through four. So I already went ahead and put those together. I have the handout and then work text page one, two, three, and four, all of them right here. And I did this for days one through five for all of the subjects. So for day two, I don't have any handouts. It's just work text page five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then 11 through 13. So it goes all the way up to 13. And like I said, page 14 is just uh, like a new unit starts off a new chapter so it goes all the way up to 13 and then I also put a, a folder in here for his math mats kind of like a manipulative folder if you will because he's going to be using these constantly I do have boxes for them for actual math manipulatives so they sent a math manipulative packet for both grades for my daughter and my son and these have like all the shapes the coins everything you need I am going to separate them into baggies, so all the coins are going to go into one baggie. Um, all the correlating different manipulatives are going to be separated into baggies, and those I'm going to put in their individual boxes right here. I found these at Ikea, one for my son, one for my daughter, and I'm going to keep these all probably on the table since they're going to be using them quite often, almost every single lesson. But the actual mats, since the mats don't fit in, to the manipulatives box, I keep them in here. We have like the red mat, all these other mats, and they use these mats for math quite often. So I have this folder here that's ready to go. Some handouts you're gonna need to use again. So they'll be referencing them in the future. So those handouts I might just keep in there or just pop it in the folder until I'm ready to whenever I need them. That's how I organized it. I did it by subject, and then I also did it into, separated that into quarters for anybody and I feel like this way I'm able to save a lot of space. I'm gonna put binders one through four for my son here and then the other ones right here. My daughter has white ones and they're gonna fit perfectly in this cabinet and I'm saving a lot of space and they're gonna have their daily binders out right here ready to access, ready to go. So that's kind of how I did it. To take a little coffee break but I wanted it to actually show the process of how I do things talking about it is one thing I'm more of a visual learner so for me it's easier to actually see I will be doing grade three right now this is the entire curriculum I didn't do Bible so it's just the essentials for my son he did grade one and like I mentioned with that one the way that language arts is set up for that one they have phonics and English then they have composition uh, handwriting reading so the phonics in English for grade one is a little bit different from grade three because for grade one, the handouts are split up between all the subjects, whereas with this one, reading has its own handout, English has its own handout, and then handwriting has its own handout that correlates with the work text, the proper work text pages, whereas with grade one, I had a whole stack of phonics and reading and it had to be separated between the proper work textbooks. So it was a little bit different for grade one. I don't know if anybody's a little bit confused, but I feel like if you once you get the curriculum and you sift through it, you'll know what I'm talking about. For grade three, it seems a little bit more straightforward. So what I do is I 
put the proper handouts on top of the proper work text pages. So I have math here. The math handouts are going on top of the math work textbook. The reading goes on top of the reading work textbook. The English goes on top of the English work textbook. Handwriting on top of handwriting. Spelling on top of spelling. And then the science handouts I put on top of the science manual. And then this heritage studies goes on top of the heritage studies activity manual. So for the history and science, they don't have work textbooks. They have something called activity manuals. So I would advise having everything ready to go. Take your handouts, put them on top of the proper, if you're doing it the method that I am, put them on top of the proper work text page and I will be doing it subject like subject as I said, and each handout does have its own video lesson guide in it. I have their video lesson guides all in here. I started off with math because that's kind of how I plan to structure our day. I place them in the exact order how I plan to do our day, the way that I set up the assignments in Homeschool Hub. I'm going to open up math day one and I put this on the side of me right here so that I can easily sift through it. I kind of keep it here like so. I have my stash of student handouts right here, and then I have my math work text right here, which is the work pages they're gonna be working on. So I start off with day one, and I look through and I see what handouts am I gonna need. Not every, sorry, I accidentally zoomed in, but not every single day is going to need a handout. You can either do it by referencing the manual, or you can just start off by using the handouts. So you go to the first handout that you see, which is this one right here, it is day one. So day one has a handout, and then you go to day one on the video lesson guide, and you look, addition strategies handout, addition and subtraction properties handout. So you're gonna need the addition strategies handout, addition and subtraction properties handout. Those are both for day one. And then when you go to the next handout, you'll see that it's already for day two. So these two are gonna go in day one, and I try to see what work text page it correlates with. It correlates with work text page two and four. The asterisk right here means these are optional. I think these are found in Homeschool Hub. I might print them because my friend did say that the teacher on the DVDs does reference them quite often and kind of confuses the child. I'll have to see. I haven't looked through the DVDs yet, but these are optional. They're not necessary. We even tell you right here. An asterisk indicates optional material or assignment. So these two handouts for day one go with the work text pages two to four. So I grab these two handouts, open up the book to work text pages two through four. So we have two through four right here, two, which is basically nothing, three, four. And I pop them in before the work text pages. So not after, but before. I put them in before the work text pages. And then I go to, on to the next uh, handout. The next handout is for day two. And I try to see if there's another day two. No, that one goes to day four. So next handout is day two. I go to my video lesson guide for day two. I have my addition and subtraction properties handout from day one. This is why I mean keep your handouts because sometimes you might need it again. So I'm going to need this one from day one. And then I'm also going to need the subtract subtraction strategies handout. And that one is going to go with work text pages five and six. So I grab my subtraction strategies handout. And that one is going to go with pages, work text pages five and six. So right here, I put it before the work text pages. Now on to the next handout. I go to day, next handout is for day four. This is their problem solving. So I go to day four. I'm gonna need that same addition subtraction properties handout from day one and the problem solving handout. And that's gonna go with the work text pages nine and 10. So I put that in right before work text pages nine and 10. And I do this for all the handouts for the entire book. And I do this before I put them in the binders, just so that the handouts are already correlated with the proper work text pages. This process makes the organizing so much easier. So I'll do all the handouts for every subject. I'll do it for math. Then I move on to the next one. I'll do it for spelling. I'll do it for reading. I'll do it for writing. I'll do it for heritage studies. And then I'll do it for science. So once all of the handouts are in their proper place in the work text pages, that is when I go about organizing them in the binder. I'll grab my binder. This I'm not going to do as I do it along, but I'll kind of visually show you guys. I put in all of my uh, file tabs right here, my big tab dividers, and I'll label them math at the same order. I'll do math, handwriting, um, spelling, like whatever the order is. 
and then I start off with math. So math for quarter one is gonna be days one through 45 because each quarter, if you split it up by four, it's 45 days. So quarter one is gonna be 45 days. The only one that's a little different is science and history. Those I'm gonna do two days a week, two lessons each. So it's not a full 180. I think they're like 90 days each. So there's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to days, keep that in mind. What I do is I go in the homeschool hub and I look at where quarter one ends and I see what lesson we should be on where the quarter ends and I'll and I'll do grab the appropriate amount of lessons and pop them in here. But let's say I'm all done with math, right? I go to my video lesson guide and I go to day 45. The last assignment for day 45 is work text pages 91 and 92. So I go to my math, I go to work text page 91 and 92. All the handouts should already be in there because I already popped them in here. But I go to work text page 91, 92. I take this entire stash, rip it out, and then put it in the math section for quarter one. Then I move on to the next subject. I see what lesson, what is the last work text page for day 45, do the exact same thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but I have found that just makes the process so much easier to put it into the binders. My suggestion would be to put the handouts into the work text pages first or into the activity packets first. Your binder is essentially only gonna have their pages that they have to work on. Whether it's a work text page, whether it's a handout or both, or an activity lesson, whatever it is. That way, when it's time to do the lessons, their weekly binders have all the papers they need for the whole week. They're not going through trying to rip everything out. You get rid of so much stuff this way. You can get rid of all of the handout packets and everything. They're all organized in the proper place. And all you're left with are like their textbooks, their science book, their history book, their reading books, their BJU book links. And those I keep right here for them to access every single day. Everything else is going to be either in their weekly binder or separated into four quarters in their quarter binder. And that's kind of how in my mind I feel like that's going to work best but I guess I guess we'll see as we do the lessons and you know get a feel for it and see but for right now this is just kind of what I've been doing so I'm going to finish the video here but just thought I would share insights on how I'm organizing this year as well as my experience kind of like a very brief overview overview of the good and the beautiful in comparison to how I my first impressions of BJU right now I'll let you guys know throughout the year as we're doing homeschool how we feel about BJU because I do feel like it takes some time to kind of get a feel for it obviously we haven't started it yet so I don't really have any thoughts and opinions these are just first impression thoughts and opinions but we are really excited so here's to a great school year for everybody some people have already started God bless you guys and your school year. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in any future videos.